zero to the first is zero. Zero squared is zero. Zero to the ninth is zero. Zero to the power of 117 is zero. In fact, this holds true for any positive real number. So zero to the infinity should be zero? That certainly seems like it should be true. It feels true. But is it? Like the other videos in this series, we have to ask, what do you even mean when you say zero to the power of infinity? You're probably thinking that intuitively, this means zero times itself infinitely many times. And we can try to create this situation, as always, with limits. What's interesting, in my opinion, about zero to the infinity when it comes to limits, it's not actually an indeterminate form. Things like one to the infinity and zero times infinity are indeterminate forms when we're talking about limits, since their true answers can be different things upon further inspection. They could be one, e, or something else completely depending on the function. When we see these indeterminate forms pop up in our limit problems, we know we have to do a little bit more work to find our true answer. Not so with zero to the infinity. It's not one of these indeterminate forms. Let me prove it to you. Let's create this form with two arbitrary functions, f and g. Let's assume that the limit of f is zero and the limit of g is infinity. Small note that f has to be approaching zero from the right-hand side. We're not considering negative numbers here. Using some limit laws, we can say that the limit of f to the power of g has the form we're interested in. It approaches zero to the power of infinity. And we can resolve this situation by using properties of logarithms. By inserting an e and a natural logarithm, we can try to compute this limit. That very nice property of logarithms will let us bring the g function out of the exponent, and if we try to compute this limit now, watch what happens. g is still approaching infinity, f is still approaching zero from the right, but this time f is inside the natural log function. And the natural log function approaches minus infinity from the right side of zero. So our limit now approaches something like e to the infinity times negative infinity, which is essentially approaching e to the minus infinity. A large number times a large negative number is a large negative number. Finally, e to the x approaches zero as x approaches negative infinity. So there we have it. Zero to the infinity is not an indeterminate form, since, regardless of the function we're using, in terms of limits, it's zero. Yet the problem is, as always, this wasn't the question I was originally asking. Zero to the infinity on its own is not a limit problem. It's some attempt at an infinite exponents problem. And that's really the problem always at the center of these types of expressions. They're using symbols or ideas in ways that aren't defined. Exponents are only traditionally defined for numbers, and infinity is not a number. So saying things like zero to the infinity doesn't make sense traditionally. We might as well say, what's zero to the hexagon? It doesn't make sense. And for that reason, zero to the infinity is undefined. But viewers of this channel know I hate to stop there. So for the purposes of this video only, we can come up with an intuitive definition that I think makes a lot of sense. We can just define what zero to the infinity means in terms of the limit of zero to the x power. Take the limit as x goes to infinity of this, and it's fortunately very easy, since zero to the x equals zero for all positive real value of x, and the limit of any constant is that constant. And so if you really want to define zero to the infinity, here is an intuitive definition, but keep in mind, this is not the traditional definition and you're not going to see this in any textbook.